Okay, uh, uh, good afternoon. This is uh, Math Ninja videos, and today we're going to be talking about arithmetic sequences. It's part of the Unit 5 on linear equations. And today what we're going to do is we're going to look for number patterns, right? Some specific number patterns, which are called arithmetic sequences. All an arithmetic sequence is, is, a, is a number pattern that either is going up or down by the same amount, right? So you can look at this first pattern, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and you can see that it's going up by 5 each time, right? Plus 5, plus 5. Because it's going up by the same amount each time, we call that an arithmetic sequence, right? An arithmetic pattern. And so if I asked you, oh, hey, what's the next number? Well, you'd say 30 because it's just going up by 5 each time, right? Pretty simple. That's an arithmetic sequence, right? But we're going to get more detailed. We're going to say, what is the hundredth number in this sequence? Now that gets harder, right? Because you can't, you don't want to keep counting by fives. There's got to be a better way. And that's what this lesson's about. You know, how do you find any number in the sequence? So here's another arithmetic sequence. Look what's happening here. Plus four, plus four, plus four. Oh, the next number would be plus four more. So it'd be 19. Arithmetic sequence. Look at this one. Down six, down six down 6. Oh, it's going minus 6 each time, so uh, what is that? Minus 14? Negative 14, all right? But like I said, we're going to really be talking about, like, what's the 100th number or what's the 28th number, stuff like that, all right? A couple uh, b bits of terminology. One, the number, if it's going up or down by the same amount each time, right, that's called an arithmetic sequence, right? If you're adding or subtracting the same amount each time, arithmetic sequence. Now, whatever it's adding or subtracting each time, so let's look at this pattern here, right? In this pattern, it's going up by fives. The common, we, we call that number that it's going up or down by the common difference, right? The common difference was five here. The common difference, I'm just going to abbreviate, the common difference on this one was four, and the common difference on this one was negative six. So that's the amount that it's going up or down by each time. Also, Another, this word, common difference, is synonymous with slope, right? This happens to be the slope of the line if this became a linear equation, all right? So that's what this is about today. So what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to kind of just show you these couple examples and show you how to write an equation for any number in the sequence, all right? So if I'm going up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, blah, 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 um, how would I solve that kind of problem? All right, so pretty easy. First thing I want you to do is understand that when you see a number pattern like this, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, what's the next one, right? The first thing I want you to do is always make a table. When you make this table, we are going to number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We always number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1 is 5, 2 is 10. 3 is 15, the fourth number is 20, the fifth number is 25, if I asked you what the sixth number was, right? If I asked you what the nth number was, all right? And we'll talk about that in a second, right? All right, so two things real quick. If you look at these uh, notes here, right, we're going to call it the term and the output. The output's the answer, right? So don't let that mess with you. But this is the term, and this is the output or... Another way of saying that is the answer, right? All right, so the, what I'm saying here is the first term is 5, the second term is 10, the third term is 15, blah, 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 all right? All right, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the pattern going up by 5s. Ah, so the common difference was 5. Or, whoops, the common difference was 5. Or, another way of saying that, the slope is 5. Now, if you go back to what we've been learning, right, we already know the slope is 5, but if I was to try to write this as a linear equation, like y equals mx plus b, I already have the slope because the slope is a common difference, but I don't have the y-intercept. That's the trick, right? So because each number is sequential 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're going to do this really simple thing. And if I was sitting in class with you, I'd ask, hey, how can we find the number before the first term? And somebody would raise their hand really quickly and said, well, if I'm going up by 5s, then I'm going to go down by 5. So if I go down by 5, this is 0. So the, the 0 term, or the term before the first term, is 0. 
Cool. So all you have to do tonight is, if it's going up by flat 5, go down by 5, right? Minus 5. And then I have this point, 0, 0. And I want you to see this. These are really just points, right? 0, 0, 1, 5, 2, 10, 3, 15, 4, 20. Ah, so the y-intercept was 0, 0, or really just 0, right? So now I can write an equation. y equals, what's the slope? 5x plus how much? Nothing. Or better yet, y equals 5x. Now, if you uh, start looking at these more detailed, you start realizing they don't really write this y part. They only write this. All right? They only usually say, what's the rule for this type of problem? And we would say 5x. Now, uh, this is just one of these little things about mathematics. Instead of using x in these types of problems, they typically use n. So the, the rule that it's being followed is 5n. All right? I see here's some noise in the background, but I have no control over that, okay? All right, so let's look at one more, and then we'll do the examples on the notes. So what if I had, uh, what was that one? 3, 7, 11, 15, blah, 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 right? And I wanted to write a rule for this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table. 1, 2, 3, 4. We can go 5 if we want, okay? So the first number was 3. The second number was 7. The third number was 11. The fourth number was 15, right? Well, first, is this an arithmetic sequence? The answer is yes, because it's going up by 4, right? Plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. Oh, cool. So the common difference, the number it's going up by, is 4. So that means the slope is 4, okay? And then remember, if it's going up by 4 this way, if I wanted to find the 0 term, or the term before the first term, that term would have been 4 less, so it would have been negative 1. So that's the y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative 1. So now I can write an equation. y equals 4x minus 1. Right? And like I said, in, in typically on these, you just write it like this. Instead of x, we use n. So the rule is 4n minus 1. All right. I didn't talk about this in the last problem because I just wanted you to get the pattern down. But let's talk about this 4n minus 1. This is cool. Because this is the number pattern. This is the rule that this pattern follows. Like, look, if I put a 1 in here for n, the first number, 4 times 1 is 4, minus 1 is 3. See, the first number in the sequence. If I put a 2 in here, 4 times 2, right? 4 times 2 is 8, minus 1 is 7. Second number is 7. Put a 3 in. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 1 is 11. 11. If I wanted to find the fifth number, I would just do 4 times... I would change that n to a 5, right? I'd say 4 times 5 is 20, minus 1 is 19. So the fifth number is 19. What if I wanted the hundredth number? Well, the hundredth number, I would just do 4 times 100 minus 1. So 399. And that's it. That's all we're doing. We're writing rules, right, for these number patterns arithmetic number patterns. All right, so let's go to these notes. Let's do a couple of these. This is not going to take us long. First things first, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where the difference between any two consecutive terms is constant, the same, right? Constant means the same. It's always going up by the same amount or down by the same amount, right? Create a pattern, a rule, going up or down, not left or right, okay? What we're doing is we're trying to find patterns between the 1 and the 3, the 2 and the 5, the 3 and the 7, the 4 and the 9. We are not looking for patterns between the 3 and the 5, the 5 and the 7, okay? There are some patterns there that we do use, but that's not what we're really trying to do, all right? We're trying to figure out how does 1 become 3, how does 2 become 5, how does 3 become 7. That's what we're trying to do, all right? So what are you going to do first? Well, first you're going to find the common difference, right? Step one, find the common difference. And that number will, whatever that common difference is, is the slope. Find the zeroth term by working the common de difference back one term, right? Go backwards one. So go backwards one. If it's going up by two, then it's going backwards by minus two. So three minus two is one, right? So what was the common difference? It was going up by two. So the common difference was two. And the y-intercept, or the zero term, is 1. Uh, yeah, 1. Right? So now I have the equation, right? I have y equals, what's the slope? 2x minus 1, or 2n minus 1. And that is what I want you to write. Okay? So that's what's going on. All right, so let's try it again with another problem. 
All right, example one. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, nth term. I'm going to say, let's find the hundredth term, okay? And we're going to do this on the next one, too. Find the hundredth term. All right, so here's what we do. First thing we do, we always put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all right? The first number was a 2, the second number was a 4, the third number was a 6, the fourth number was an 8, the fifth number was a 10. All right? How do I find the common difference? Well, it's going up by 2. So the common difference is 2, which makes the slope 2. The y-intercept, all I have to do is work it backwards 1. All right? Wish I had a little spot there for it. I'm going to make one, right? If I worked it backwards 2, then 0, 0. The 0 term would have been 0, so the y-intercept is 0. All right? So the slope is 2 and the y-intercept is 0. So it's y equals 2x plus 0. Or, remember what I said, instead of using, we don't usually write the y when we're writing these. We can just write 2n. If you write 2x plus 0, that's fine. But the rule is 2n. Right? All right, next problem. What's happening? All right? Well, the first term is a negative 7. The second term is a negative 2. The third term is a 3. The fourth term is an 8. The, fourth, uh, the fifth term is a 13. All right? So what's happening? It's going up by 5 each time, right? Plus 5, plus 5. So the common difference is 5, which makes the slope 5. Work it backwards one. The zero term would have been five. If it's plus five this way, it's minus five that way. So don't think it's negative two. It's negative seven minus five, which is negative 12. So this term would have been negative 12. So the y-intercept is negative 12. So the equation is y equals, right? M is what? The slope is 5x minus 12, or another way of saying that is 5n minus 12. So the rule is 5n minus 12. Now check this out on both these problems. If the rule for this problem is 2n, if I wanted to find the hundredth number, I would just do 2 times 100, which is 200, right? So the 100th term is 200, right? So what's the hundredth term in this sequence? Well, all I would do is I would do 5 times 100 minus 12. So 500 minus 12 is, uh, what, 488. So the 100th number is 488. All right, last problem. Look at the pattern. Minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. So the common difference is negative 4. I should have done this first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The first number is 55. The second number is 51. The third number is 47. The fourth number is 43. The fifth number is 39. And I could use the 35 if I wanted, but I'm not even going to use it. All right. All right. What else am I going to do? Well, I found the common difference. It's minus 4, negative 4. So the slope is negative 4. And the y-intercept just work backwards 1. The zero number would have been 4. If it's going down by 4, it's going to go up by 4, so 59. All right? So the y-intercept is 59. So the equation of the line is y equals negative 4x plus 59 or negative 4n plus 59. All right? Negative 4n plus 59 is the rule. And I could find any number I wanted now. If I wanted to find the 50th number in this sequence, I could put a 50 in for n. If I wanted to find the 1,000th number, put a 1,000 in for n. That's it. All right? So it's a nice little shortcut for these arithmetic sequences. Later in the school year, and later in these video series, much later, actually, when we get done with uh, exponential and ex exponent rules, right, we're going to come back to this and talk about this at a deeper level, but that'll get you started on these. All right, so good luck, and uh, if you need help with it, Send me an email to uh, math, Native, math Ninja Videos at Gmail or leave me a comment on my website. All right, good luck.